Nope, sorry, no Sonic this time around. No, do not adjust your computer monitors. Don't go around clicking some other videos on this channel. Yes, this is me, still, unfortunately. This is not a parallel universe. This really is me, if you haven't been watching any of my personal videos lately. This is the way things are now for the for the for foreseeable future. Regardless, Doctor Who, Series 11, Episode 9, it takes you away. Probably a little riff on the most recent, the more recent uh, horror movies of the last few years, like uh, It Comes at Night, It Follows, or just simply It. So. That was a crazy episode, I gotta admit, uh, I was not expecting that. Well, for, the, for those of you who don't know, I've been a bit busy lately. As you can see, I've got a lot of my head, a lot on my head right now. So, uh, I only just saw the episode right now, even though the episode came out a few days ago, but, um, I've, I didn't really read any reviews on it before watching it, I just, um, I read a few headlines, uh, I try to stay away from them for spoiler reasons, but apparently I've heard a lot of people being upset about uh, the frog scene, that's what the headlines called it, or New Time Lord Mythology, and I said, well how bad can this be? Not that bad, when it really comes down to it. I actually found myself really enjoying it. Um, I'd like to separate this episode into three distinct parts. There's the Norway stuff in the beginning, where it kind of felt like a, a traditional Doctor Who horror episode. Uh, then there's the anti-zone stuff, where it just sort of evolved into a Doctor Who-ish um, traveling stuff and encountering weird alien things, world between worlds and all that jazz. And then there's the final part of it, which is the parallel universe, which is something we haven't really seen in Doctor Who for a while, to be honest. Um, we haven't really seen much of, a, much of a parallel universes in Doctor Who in general. There, there's been some bits and pieces here and there, and especially during the Fourth Doctor era, during the Tenth Doctor era, and a little bit during the um, Third Doctor era, but definitely not something on this capacity. Uh, we'll get to all that later, but let's just start with the uh, actors and the characters themselves. The Doctor, again, I keep saying this every week, Jodie Whittaker is incredible. I mean, I don't know what people's beef is with uh, Jodie's performance. If there is any beef at all, I just think Jodie does her job to perfection. Uh, she's, she's just showing multiple sides to her... Uh, uh, portrayal of uh, the 13th Doctor and she does it again in this episode and there's really no point in uh, overemphasizing that uh, thing. I gotta say, as far as companions go, Ryan kind of disappointed me this episode. I, don't, I didn't think he was written very well in the first half, but uh, he sort of made a turnaround in the second half. Um, you know, it kind of started with the whole Maybe your dad just left you. You know, Ryan, just because your dad left you, doesn't mean it's going to happen to everyone. I mean, I have met some people that have lost their fathers, but, you know, my parents are divorced, and I don't really see my dad a lot, but we're still in a very good place. We talk a lot to each other. We, I mean, he's finally done something he never did and I never even thought he would he started leaving comments on my videos which is just blowing my mind but yeah father's stuff you know uh, I think Yaz is a definite improvement in this episode I think this this and uh, Demons of the Punjab are Yaz's two best episodes not that it's anything much to go by but um, I think Yaz is really coming into her own especially in this episode I mean it, yeah. The second to last episode, and just now she's really becoming who she is. But yeah, it took some time to get there for her, but 
at least she did get there eventually. And uh, by the way, if you haven't read the, uh, the the Doctor Who novel Combat Magics, Mantip Gill is doing the audio version of that book, and she's doing it very good. And uh, I think Yaz is a pretty interesting character in that book. I'm audibling it. I haven't really audibled a lot of it up to this point. I'm still somewhat in the beginning area, but I've liked what I've heard so far, and yeah, Yaz. I might be the only Yaz fan out there right now. Of course, we just uh, we can't talk about this episode without discussing Graham. Easily the best companion of this season series, bar none. I mean, Graham, Bradley Walsh, first of all, Brad, Bradley Walsh is just incredible throughout this entire season, series. Sorry, I keep mixing the two, but yeah, Bradley Walsh, I mean, he's just delivering. I mean, I would even say that he, he's on a more consistent basis than the Doctor and then Jody Whittaker. He's easily the best actor in this series by far outshining the uh, the lead and I can't believe I'm saying this but that's just the reality of the situation and well he got a, he had a lot to do in this episode and again ninth episode in but certain things are finally coming into fruition with obviously Ryan finally calling him grandfather for the first, especially since uh, all the stuff that they've been through since episode one of this series. As far as the uh, guest appearances, I didn't exactly like Hannah uh, at first. Not because of the actress, the actress did a brilliant job. I mean, I didn't really think the character was written all that well, but she was there to serve a purpose at the end of the episode which she delivered on so I guess it's sort of a bit of um, consolation as far as that goes uh, her dad Eric uh, didn't really do much for me personally uh, again the actor did, a, did his job uh, as best he could but again just uh, maybe not some, such excellent writing uh, same thing goes with the wife Great acting, not so great writing. Grace, though. The return of Grace was a shocker to me, and forgive me for not remembering the uh, name of the actress, but she was just brilliant, both in the playing of the character of Grace and in the voiceover, which we'll get to later, but yeah, I, I think that might have been the best written guest character in this episode, which is ironic because she had the least screen time. So yeah, let's talk about the frog scene. Um, I didn't mind it. Yeah, I know. Shocker, I'm in a minority. I actually kind of semi enjoyed this the frog scene because, well, it's Doctor Who, and Doctor Who is a weird show, and it does weird stuff sometimes. And yeah, sometimes you get a sentient universe. Uh, disguising itself as a frog for some reason. Regardless, I think that whole new side of the mythology was handled very well from the doctor um, teasing it in her sort of bedtime stories. Apparently she has she, she had seven grandmothers that we didn't even know of and one of them may or may not have been an agent for the Zygons. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's a story for another time, I guess, but we don't know much about Time Lord mythology with Regardless, we haven't, I mean, it's an enigma to us, right? We, the, the more we know, the less we want to know, is sort of, in a way. Like, it's, it's not like a bedtime stories from Time Lord mythology is new to this show. I mean, you guys all remember the, the Fendal, right? Uh, or the Toclophane, or the Chakra, Chakri, Chakru, Chuk, whatever their name was. Yeah, these things are going to happen at some times, and sometimes it's going to be handled better than other times. I, again, I didn't have a problem with the sentient universe. 
Yeah, he probably could have chosen a better form than a frog, but regardless, I think this is, was the by far the weirdest episode in this series, and it probably will always be remembered as the weirdest episode during the Jody Whittaker era. I enjoyed this episode, I give it a sort of medium thumbs up, not a full thumbs up, but sort of halfway there. To me, it's a solid episode, not a very uh, particularly good one, but an enjoyable one that, like I said, was uh, split into two, into three parts for me. I haven't really talked about the, the, the alien character because I didn't really think he had that much significance to the story. It was just a plot device to get uh, the Doctor, Graham and Yaz from point A to point B, and you can't even see my hand right now, from point A to point B, with a few complications and alterations along the way. So yeah. I think that about covers it all, uh, well, other than the apparent sheep revolt, which I'm not even sure you guys want to talk about, but regardless, I think this episode served its purpose as sort of a runner-up to the finale, which we'll see uh, in a few days now, but I'm excited for the finale, because it looks like uh, the stands are coming back, finally. I definitely heard in the next, in the, uh, next time uh, teaser a voice that sounded very much like Zim Shah or Tim Shaw whichever you want to call him or a another stanza perhaps but yeah it takes you away I guess it means it takes you if this universe takes you from your universe to himself because he wants to be with you or something I don't know um, yeah like I said, guys, I like this episode. Uh, wouldn't exactly recommend it to anyone, but to each his own, I guess. So, uh, thank you for watching, and yeah, I hope I, get, I didn't scare you with this whole Frankenstein thing I've got going on. So, get out now! Hello again, everybody. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel, where I do all kinds of weird stuff like showcase all these things, you know, trailer reactions, movie reviews, all kinds of fun stuff. So, until next time, I'll see you guys next time.